Today I want to give a brief overview of the use of integer constraints in linear programming. And the best way to start, I guess, is with an example. So I'm going to use the one that's in the PowerPoint for the week uh, entitled Air Express. I don't think it has a title on the PowerPoint actually, but the <clears throat> Excel spreadsheet is available on Blackboard under that name. So you can open up the, um, the file and play with it if you want to do that. The formulation of the problem is, is fairly straightforward, but it's not really the point of what I have to say today, so I'm just going to go over it very briefly. The decisions to be made in this case are to assign certain numbers of workers to one of seven different weekly rotations so that the requisite number of employees are available each of the seven days of the week. So down here we have the constraints box. You can see these are the number of people that have to be in place each day. And the left-hand side will be the number of people actually there once we implement these decision variables. And there are costs associated with assigning people to different shifts as well. So our objective for the problem is going to be to minimize total cost subject to meeting the, the staffing requirements that we have, have in place. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Let's um, open up Solver now. And it's already set up for us at least as far as it goes. We want to minimize total cost by changing the yellow cells B to H6, subject to the constraint that we have to have enough people available. Non-negativity is observed, simplex LP, so we're good to go. Okay, so we solve. Solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. We're happy. Well, don't be too happy. This is a mistake that I've seen lots of people make, and myself on occasion as well. This looks like a perfectly good solution, but if I were to take these cells and look a little more closely by putting another decimal point in there, we will see that these are definitely not integer numbers of people, and this therefore is a solution that you could not implement. All right, so the way we get around that, uh, we have to have integer numbers of people. So we're going to enforce a constraint in Solver that says the decision variables have to be integer. Okay, not terribly complicated. And just for reference purposes, I'm going to record the value of the objective function at this point so we can see what it was as a reference point. All right, so with this in hand, I need now to go back to, to Solver. I'm going to open it up, and I have to add a constraint. And I'm going to add the constraint that all of my decision variables must be integer. Click OK and click Solve. Solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. OK, well, what happened? We got exactly the same solution as before. We still have fractional people. This isn't working. What went wrong here? Well, we didn't do anything wrong, or at least not explicitly wrong. But Office 2010 has a particular feature baked into it so that if we go into the options page, we see there's a little box here called Ignore Integer Constraints. Now, why on earth we would even need such a box, never mind why it should be checked as default, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is that in every version of Office 2010 that I've seen, it is checked by default, which means just what it says. It's ignoring integer constraints. Well, we don't want it to do that, so we need to uncheck that box. Click OK. Now we solve it. Now we get a different message. Solver found an integer solution with intolerance. All constraints are satisfied. With the setup that we just used, this is as good as we're going to get. So let's click OK. And we can see that, unsurprisingly, the cost has gone up. Um, since we don't have the flexibility to use fractional people, but it hasn't gone up that much, so it's not something that I would worry too much about. If it did go up a lot, as a manager, you would say that's the amount of money that might be left on the table that could be gained back by rescheduling shifts or doing something like that, but since that's a pretty small number, we'll forget about it. Okay, we now have a, an integer solution to our problem. There's really nothing a whole lot more complicated about that, but it's probably worth explaining a little bit about how Solver actually does this. If it hasn't already occurred to you, it probably it's a good time to mention that, that when we put an integer constraint on some of the decision variables, 
the problem is no longer linear. So it suffers from some of the disadvantages of nonlinear problems, except that Solver has a relatively efficient way of coming up with a solution based on the assumption that the rest of the problem is actually linear. So what Solver does is it first calculates this value, the baseline value, and then it does a trial and error routine to try to find combinations of integers that will get us as close as possible to that, that number. Now, only in very rare occasions are we going to hit it exactly, so we need some sort of, of tolerance to tell us when we stop. And in fact, the box that we just looked at, and let's go back to Solver here and look under Options again, this, this box where it said ignore integer constraints, well, we're not ignoring it anymore. Now we have to pay attention to the next box here, which is the integer optimality tolerance in percent, which says that once Solver has come up with the baseline number, the 22103 in this case, it now looks for solutions, and when it gets one with, that's within 5% in this case of the, the baseline, or what we call the LP relaxation, then it stops, calls it done. And that's what it meant when it said that Solver found a solution within tolerance. Now, 5% seems to be the default setting for Solver in every version of Excel that I've seen, but I don't guarantee that yours is going to be the same. 5% seems to be a pretty good general purpose tolerance for this kind of problem. Uh, if we make it larger, then Solver is going to stop before it finds the best solution, and it might be quite a long way off. And if we make the tolerance smaller, uh, it may work okay, but at some point it becomes small enough that Solver can't find a feasible solution, in which case we're kind of out of luck, we wouldn't get anything. And if you knew what you're doing, obviously you'd go back in and change that and get, a, get an answer, but 5% seems to be a pretty safe starting point, and it's very unlikely that you're going to improve the problem that much by, by changing it. But I do want to show you one example that was specifically chosen to illustrate that, that point. But for now, I'm just going to bail out of this. I can close that again. I don't need it anymore. Uh, we've seen how we use integer constraints in a, in a basic way. All right, let me flip to another example. This is called the Blue Ridge Hot Tubs example, and it's also laid out in the PowerPoint for the week, and the spreadsheet is also available on Blackboard, so, so it can be played with. Now, in this case, I think let's, let's just reset Solver completely and close it. Okay, there's our, our, our basic problem. We have to decide how many of two different products to make to maximize our profitability given the normal kinds of restrictions on availability of parts and, and materials. So that's not a, not a very complicated problem. We'll set it up this way. Our objective is going to be cost, we want to, or profitability rather, so we want to maximize it. I'm going to maximize it by deciding how many units to build. Subject to the constraints that our time and materials have to be less than equal to the time and materials available. And it's a linear problem and it's non-negative. So we should be able to, to solve that. And we get an answer. Solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Very good. All right, we see that we have a fractional solution, and this one's a bit of an oddball because they're both just slightly under uh, integer values, which actually is what creates the little difficulty in this place. But let's just record the objective function value at this point. I'll do it in whole dollars. 64,306 is good enough. If the way the problem was, was framed, that fractional solutions were a problem for us, they sometimes are, sometimes aren't, but if they were a problem, then we'd have to go and impose the, the integer constraint. So let's do that. So we're going to add a constraint. We're going to add the constraint that our solution must be integer. Okay, now I've got to go back into the options box. And of course, it's, it's checked. Ignore integer constraints. That's the default. Uh, by the way, this is a time for a, a digression here. Earlier versions of Office or of Excel do not have this particular checkbox. However, the, the feature is still there in some respect. So if you were to take a file of mine that was created in Office 2010 
and open it in an earlier version of Office, you would not be able to effectively uncheck this box. There's no way to do that, but it would still be there. So if you tried to run Solver, it simply would ignore your integer constraints and you would never be able to figure out what was going on. Well, this is what's going on. It's carrying a hidden default with it. And the only way to get rid of that is to do what I did earlier, is to reset all of the solver settings and build it up again. Um, sorry if that's a little tedious, but it's really the only way around this. Okay, for this problem, we don't want to ignore integer constraints. We want to apply them, so we'll click OK. Um, don't change anything else, so we'll solve that. Solver found an integer solution within tolerance, within the 5% tolerance, that is. All constraints are satisfied. Okay, let's keep it. And we see that, not surprisingly, our profitability went down a little bit. Extra constraints never make your life better. They just make it worse. So we went down to 64.050, and I'm just going to record that number for reference purposes. And I'm also going to record the solution, just so you can see what's happening here. Okay, so that's the actual solution. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Solver, and I'm going to go to Options. And I'm going to change the tolerance from 5% to, say, 0.05%, something really small. Click OK. And go ahead and solve it. Solver found an integer solution within tolerance. All conditions are satisfied. Great. All right. Notice that we improved our situation $50 worth over the previous one and that the solution has changed. We changed the product mix. Now, this was a very carefully chosen example to show what can happen if you don't play around with the tolerances on uh, integer constraints. Now, 99% of the time, this will never be a problem. It's not something you need to worry about on any of the homework problems I give you. But it's something that you should be aware of as one of the limitations of how Solver handles integer constraints. Uh, once you understand that, then you can go forward with your eyes open. There's one other limitation on the use of integer constraints that's probably worth mentioning as well. Let me open up Solver again. I'll go ahead and click Solve. No change, as you would expect. But now look over here where it's under Reports, where we used to be able to get a sensitivity report. It's not there. We cannot get a sensitivity report for integer problems because it's, it's nonlinear, and the sensitivity report wouldn't make any sense. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. That's kind of unfortunate, actually, because integer um, constrained problems are typically the ones that are more sensitive to small changes than others. So sensitivity analysis is even more important. You're just going to have to do it on your own by creating a, a data or a solver table to, to check the results. OK, that's it for an overview of integer linear programming. Pretty brief, but I think it covers what you need to know. And the next one up will be binary integer programming.